Hello everyone, Bill Parrish here, GTT Audio, and welcome to the channel today. Today we're going to talk about something that I'm asked about at least once a week. And it's called speaker placement. And I thought I'd do this video to also serve my benefit as long as well as hopefully teach you something. <laughs> because now when instead of being asked or when I'm asked, I can point them to episode 20, which is today. So again, welcome. And I'll remind you at the end, but if you're liking these videos, please subscribe, share, comment, and at the end, go down there and hit the thumbs up and like this video as well. So speaker placement. This is what we're going to talk about today. Where do I put my speakers? You've gone out, you've purchased and you, you've gone, you've done A-Bs, uh, you've, you've done a lot of research, you've decided on a new pair of speakers, where do you put them? Well, you take them and you shove them right in the corners. <laughs> Just seeing if you're paying attention. No, you don't do that. Even though there are some that do that. And if you're going to shove your speakers in the corners, and you know, 20 feet, you got a 20 foot wide room, so you put one in this corner and one in that corner. If that's the way you're going to set up, then you just wasted all your time doing all your research and traveling around uh, on which speaker to buy. At that point, if that's how you're going to set up your speakers, you should have just bought the speaker that for some reason appealed to you by brand name or by aesthetics. Sound has nothing to do with it if that's how you're setting up your speakers because your speakers are going to be severely handicapped if that's how you set them up. So then we're, we're always asked, I can't have my speakers out in the middle of the room. Can I put them against the wall? Yes. But that is a compromise, and that is a compromise no matter what model or brand of speaker you, you purchase. Now, will some speakers sound better up against the wall than others? Yes, of course. I mean, you are going to be able to tell some differences, significant differences, but you're not going to have any sort of real depth of sound, uh, Space will be constricted, um, dynamics will be constricted, uh, the, the sound stage won't be proper, you know, if you, but if you're going to put something against the wall, I mean, there's different types of speakers, right? I mean, there's electrostat panels, uh, um, you know, ribbon speakers, horn speakers, um, dipoles. But let's just talk about, well, we can talk about them all, but, uh, you know, ported speakers, vented speakers, sealed speakers. Sealed speakers will absolutely sound best against a wall as opposed to ported speakers and vented speakers. I mean, the, the front ported speakers against the wall sound chunky and bass heavy and if you're uh, rear ported speakers I mean the sound stage always the sound stage collapses but you know you get you get some muddy stuff I mean to try to fire sound against the wall from the rear of a speaker to me makes no sense I, I mean I'm a phase person I want things in phase and and that just doesn't uh, make a whole lot of sense to me but, uh, but son, so, you know, can a speaker go up against the wall? The answer is yes. And what type of speaker will sound best against the wall? I would say a sealed box speaker. Absolutely would, uh, would sound best. But, you know, there's, we've talked about in the past, I've mentioned that, uh, you know, there's people buy audio equipment not always for sound. I mean, there's a lot of reasons to buy audio equipment. And sometimes they just, you know, they want the pretty box. They want the, uh, 
they want that brand name, they want that brand's image. Um, and so they, they will turn around and put it against the wall, or sometimes there's uh, wife acceptance factors, you know, she's not going to have the speaker out in the middle of the room, as they call it, but it's not really the middle of the room. Let's, let's talk about rooms in general first. Uh, you know, behind the speakers, let, let's get our language down. You're sitting here, the speakers are there coming towards me, so that wall that I'm looking at is the front wall. Some people call it the back wall, but that's the front wall. It's behind the speakers, the front wall. The back wall are these records back here, behind me, my back. So front wall, back wall, side walls. That's pretty, that's pretty um, uh, self-explanatory if you don't think these are the side walls. Well, I don't know what to say. That would leave me speechless. So front wall, back wall, side walls. Now we've got, uh, so, you know, um, long wall. Uh, do you put your speakers on the long wall or do you put your speakers on the short wall? I like setting speakers up on the short wall. That means you got a sheet of paper here. This would be the short wall. You turn it this way, this would be the long wall. So if this is the long wall, then speaker here and speaker there. On the short wall, which is more conventional, speaker here, speaker there. The best way, the absolute best way to do it is to put the speakers, back of the speakers against or towards the short wall. That's, uh, that's the most conventional, that's the best way of doing it. Uh, you'll get the best sound that way. There's always compromises. And there's times when how the room's laid out, uh, aesthetics, uh, usefulness, um, you know, win windows, uh, doors, uh, you know, the balconies, etc. You've got to put it on the long wall. The long wall gives you killer bass. If you put the back of the speakers towards, towards the back wall and you fire the short distance of the room, Oh, you, you get really nice bottom end. But you, your compromise is that you lose depth. You lose the depth of the sound. Or actually, I should come this way. In any case, uh, yeah, that's that compromise. So if you, can, if you can set up on the short wall, firing the long way, that's, that's going to be the best uh, way to get, to get your best sound. The real question is, you know, and what, what started this whole thing is where do I place the speakers in the room? Well, if you go online, there's probably a hundred formulas. Maybe there's 75, maybe there's 2,000. I mean, I haven't checked, but, you know, we, I've heard so many different ways. Everyone's got different ways of doing it. I would say probably none of them are right and none of them are wrong. <laughs> so what am I going to tell you in this video? Well, I'm going to tell you how to get there. That's, that's what I'm going to tell you. And if you, you know, all these formulas, how can they, how can they all be right? They're not. And, and of course, when they're looking at it, they're looking at a, at a rectangular room. They're not looking at sloped walls, slope ceilings, cathedral ceilings, tray ceilings. They're not looking at what's in the room, uh, records. They're not looking at credenzas, desks, uh, furniture, how many couches you have, floor coverings. So there's no way that I can give you a formula and tell you to place your speakers here does not work could be a good starting point and that's what we're going to talk about first but let me also say something um, you know put the spikes on last put the spikes on first put the spikes on first and get some make some sort of contraption buy some sort of contraption uh, use sliders push the speakers around it becomes very easy but you want to have your speakers elevated. 
put your speaker bottom on the on the floor and it's going to suck the life out of it. The bass is going to sound muddy. This bass is going to sound boomy. There won't be any resolution. Get it up. Get it up off the floor where the sound can come around because bass is omnidirectional. You get resolution. You get deeper bottom end. You, you hear into it. Remember, bass is not boom. Bass is real instruments. And you want to hear that resolution. So get it up. That, that way you can hear it. This is very easy. I can walk into just about any room and have a speaker completely dialed in in less than 10 minutes. Less than 10 minutes. Of course, I have 26 years of experience, but I can, I can guarantee you, you can get there very simply. So if you're doing it yourself and it takes an hour, I mean, you just spent... 10, 20, 50, 100, 200,000 on a pair of speakers, you can, and if you're spending the, in the upper ranges, the dealer that sold it to you better be there installing them. That's for sure. I know we do. In any case, what's the formula? All right, this is not magic. Here's what we do. And we don't put a lot of dots around because the dots don't get you anywhere. Measure the length of the room. Measure the width of the room. Now take the length of the room. Oh, and one other thing. Always measure to the speaker's tweeter. That means if you're going from the front, front wall to the, to the tweeter, you've got to go over the speaker or to the side of the speaker. You're always measuring to the tweeter. And when you measure from the side wall, you're measuring to the tweeter. Let's do sidewall first. Measure the width of the room, divide it by four. You want a quarter. Bring the speakers in 25%, one quarter from the sidewall. Okay? Right in from the side. Now, measure the length of the room, put a piece of tape down at a quarter and at a third. So now you've got a window. You've got a window of a couple of feet, maybe. And then what you do is you push that speaker. Start it, if, if you want it as close to the wall as possible, start back there at the quarter line. Listen, move it, measure, listen, move, slide it, measure, push it back those those little movements and, and at the beginning you can do six inches at a time you can do a foot at a time better or worse better or worse better or worse that's all you're asking yourself as you're sliding the speaker back and forth but again the more you do it i mean you can get there this is this is quick listen to a couple of notes um yeah it's 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 quite simple actually so you do that you found your sweet spot there. You found, as you're moving the speakers back and forth, sliding them, now you found the place which gives you the best, remember, everything's a compromise. I mean, there's nothing that's absolutely perfect. So this is the spot where you found the best sound stage, the best highs, the best bottom end, of course the best mid-range. 85% of the music lives in the mid-range. So that's also very important. Don't sit there and listen to just a bass note and think you're getting it. Listen to music as a whole, not just individual pieces. Reviewers dissect equipment based on the best treble I've ever heard, the best bass, and they, they dissect it. But when you're listening, that's how a reviewer listens. And that's how they have to listen to be able to report to you. But when you're listening, you should be listening to music as a whole. So you've, you've found that sweet spot. Now, how's it sound? Is something a little thin? Is something a little overripe? Okay, if it's a little thin, now we have to take that, those speakers from the quarter inch or the quarter, uh, one quarter of the room part. Maybe you need to move it in. Once you found this spot, as you move it this way, 
the differences are pretty significant. So maybe each one goes in two, two inches. That either helped or it didn't. Maybe it needs to go out an inch. So this way and then this way. I can tell you when you get it in the right place in the room or when you're in the window, one inch movements make phenomenal, huge, mega differences. So get it in the window and you just move it a little bit and it makes big differences. On my Instagram and uh, Facebook page, I, I posted a system I did recently with some little uh, red Carmel 2s. I can tell you, I mean, that, that, that room had like a, a vent to the back of my right, uh, a vent over on the left, vent doorways, okay? Uh, big credenza, flat screen in the middle, but plaster walls. Once we got, I moved the speaker around, and once I got it into the place, the most minute differences made enormous, enormous sound changes. And man, once we nailed it, we nailed it. So this is sort of where the placement is. See, I got you in a window. Again, I can do this in 10 minutes. You should be able to do it easily, well within an hour. Listen to music as a whole. Listen from the top to the bottom. Listen to dynamics, uh, resolution, sound stage, uh, body. Body and weight's very important. Don't go for that thinness. Real instruments are not thin at all. So now we talk about toe-in. Do you have your speakers firing straight? Do you tow them in? Oh, let, let me back up for a second. What I just told you about where your speakers go, I didn't tell you what type of speakers. All of them. Speaker placement in a room is not speaker dependent. It is room dependent. So do it with, do it. I don't care if you got dipoles, omnidirectionals, uh, ported speakers, vented speakers, uh, sealed, the sealed enclosures, horns. They all, this, this is the acoustical center. The, this is acoustically optimized in your room for speaker placement. What you just did, regardless of what speaker you have. We have, we have rooms here where we swap speakers in and out. And there's a piece of tape or there's some holes or little pieces of tape. All of the speakers go in the same place. They always work. And, and I'm going to show, I'm going to show Von Schweiker just as well as YG, just as well as Key Audio or Clips or anything else. They're always going in the same spot. I want every speaker that I represent to sound their best. And that's how you do it. So I told you that. So now, now we get in the toe-in. Now toe-in's an interesting thing. Um, take your speakers. I mean, you always got to have a little, you'd never toe out. So um, toe them in a little bit. Sound stage always collapses. The height of it always collapses the more you tow it in. Open it up, and you get a more a larger diffuse sound. I almost like to think of it as if you really want to be sitting at the mastering council, where the mastering engineer was sitting, tow them in. Now you're really hearing the recording. My preference is to hear the performance. If you want to hear the performance, open the speakers up, give them a, a one inch, one, a two, a one and a half inch toe, a three inch toe, you know, a slight toe. Give them a slight toe, especially speakers that have great off-access listening, and you will hear this big sound stage. 
you hear this resolution. You don't get these etch pieces. You get people that come here know you get defined images here, but you also get this huge sound. You the speakers also completely disappear. I find that when you tow speakers in, the the speakers are heard more as well. This is strictly a matter of preference, in my opinion. Toe in, not the toe, the degree of toe, a complete and utter matter of opinion. Nothing else. Lastly, and then I'll wrap this up. What do you put your speakers on? You know, we talked about moving them on, you know, the, the feet or the wheels. So, oh, Wilson comes with casters. I think everybody should come with casters. The absolute smartest, the smartest way of doing it for placing speakers. Get some casters and roll those things around. Um, anyway, so, <laughs> you, you know, so you've, you, now, now you've placed your speaker. What you want to do is literally nail them to the floor. I mean, take those spikes, put some weight on it, get them to the floor. If you could, I mean, you know, a piece of rebar right through the floor, connected to the floor to the speaker. I mean, that would be the ultimate, I think. But you want that speaker as sturdy as possible. There's companies out there making footers or they, uh, they move around. When a speaker, especially if you're playing loud, if you're playing uh, big music, I mean, you're moving air, you're pushing. If you're pushing this much air, even on a microscopic level, that speaker's got to come back. And now you're pulling, and then the speaker's going this way. You do not want your speaker to move. You do not want your speaker to move. It's counterintuitive. Having your speaker on a very firm footing will always sound better. Like I said, if I could, I would nail it to the floor. I would take rebarb to the floor and, and just did it. I know someone that put uh, concrete pads. They, well, that's another thing. I keep, keep thinking of more stuff because this conversation really could go on forever. If you're on a flimsy, flexible floor, get a strong base. Get a very strong base and mount your speakers on that. I mean, I've got a reviewer friend in New York City. He's got, uh, you know, speaker bases. I mean, even if it's a giant piece of butcher block, get something that gives some foundation to that. You'll get, you'll, your, your speakers will pay you back a hundred times over. So put that speaker on something firm you're going to get better imaging, you're going to get better dynamics, you're going to get better sound stage. Well, I hope this made sense to you. I'm sure there's people that do it differently, and I'm sure, you know, I'm going to ask you to like this video. There'll probably be some people that disagree and not like it. Oh well. I can tell you that we, we get very good sound here. We win best of show at every show we've ever done. Uh, we go in and we do installs. Our customers are always happy with the speaker placement. So I, I've, you know, everything's a compromise. Um, I, I cannot give you a, you know, if you give me my room's eight by ten or, you know, no, let's hope that it's bigger than that. But you know, my room's thirteen by twenty-six. I can't tell you exactly where to place it. You have to do this because I don't know if you have a soffit around. I don't know what furniture you have. I don't know the dust, the credenza, the floor covering, etc. It's 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 a little science. It's a little magic. It's a lot of listening. But if you know what you're doing, you can get there quickly. So again, like this video, share it, comment below, and subscribe. And we'll see you in two weeks.